Good evening, and welcome back to Grace for our third and final installment of this year's Advent Midweek series. Today, once again, we're going to be taking a look at an Advent or Christmas hymn. Can you figure out which one it is before we sing it at the end? Today, we're going to meet up with an Episcopalian preacher named Phillips Brooks. Now, Phillips filled any pulpit he was in. He was, in fact, six foot six and 300 pounds, so it was hard to mistake him when he was coming down the road toward you. Phillips was known for lightning sermons. He was known for not having enough time for all the things he wanted to put in it. This year, 1865, was, of course, the final year of the Civil War, and he decided to go on a trip to the Holy Land in December of that year. As he was in Israel, he went on horseback to the town of Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And he attended a five-hour-long Christmas Eve Mass. He was very touched and moved by that service. In fact, later he would write, I remember standing in the old church in Bethlehem, close to the spot where Jesus was born when the whole church was ringing hour after hour with splendid hymns of praise to God. How again and again it seemed as if I could hear voices I knew well telling each other of the wonderful night of the Savior's birth. Well, Phillips went home and this event impacted his memory. He kept thinking about it year after year. And three years later, in 1868, he decided he would write a poem, in fact, a hymn, for the children's Christmas program that year. He wrote the hymn and he gave it to his organist and said, see if you can write a tune for this. If you make it a good tune, I'll name it after you. <laughs> How generous. Well, the organist had the problem of no inspiration he sat there and sat there with this poem in hand, unable to come up with anything, until the night before the Christmas program, in the middle of the night, after he goes to bed, he wakes up with a start. He's got a tune in his head. He grabs a piece of paper, scribbles down the tune, and then goes back to sleep. The next morning, he wakes up and goes to the Christmas program where he proceeds to teach the six teachers and 36 children this hymn. No word on the miracle of how he was able to get all that done in the hour before the children's Christmas program that day. But get it done, he did. He managed to teach them. They sang the song that very night at the children's Christmas program for the first time. Now this hymn, as I said, has five stanzas, but only four make it into most of our hymnals. You may not be familiar with the fifth one. It reads like this. Where children, pure and happy, pray to the blessed child, where misery cries out to thee, son of the mother mild, where charity stands watching and faith holds wide the door, the dark night wakes. The glory breaks, and Christmas comes once more. Well, Pastor Brooks was very pleased with the hymn. In fact, he did name it after the organist, Louis Redner. The tune, St. Louis. And the hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. <laughs> 